welcome back to another episode of our seed sowing guide here at California Carnivores. Lots of our other videos I've been talking about how this probably isn't for beginners and maybe you should try some other things first before you try doing Nepenthe seeds. Today I want to do a video specifically about growing Cape Sundews from seed because it is such a really great first carnivorous plant to grow from seeds. Um, it was my very first plant when I was 11 years old and when I was about 12 years old uh, I went through the process that I'm going to talk about here today, which is the very first carnivorous plants I ever grew from seed. So if you got a nice cape sundew from us, chances are this spring it's going to make one of these tall things here. It's a cauliflower. And they have really pretty pink flowers. It's not a very sunny day here today, so they haven't opened fully. But in the sun they'd be even more round, even more full. Um, one of the great things about sundews, most sundews, and the Cape sundew is definitely one of these, is the flowers self-pollinate to make thousands of seeds. There are a few groups like pygmy sundews aren't so great at that, tuberous sundews generally don't do that, but most of the um, little rosetted sundews, cape sundews, um, some of the fork leaf sundews, the thread leaf sundews, lots of them will make some seeds all on their own, which makes them really, you know, it's a great candidate to get some seeds off of. Uh, so this guy is too green to make any seeds. What you want to do before you collect is to see this uh, scape turning brown. And when these uh, old flower pot, old flowers turn brown, that's when you know you're ready to collect seeds. If you've seen my videos before, you know I get a lot done with a clean white piece of paper like this, folded in half, long ways. And then we're just gonna see if there's any seeds. Oh, there's a few seeds in there. Lots of times it'll rain down thousands of seeds. I bet we could probably get some more. Let's put it here. Maybe here. Let's see what this does. Oh uh, yeah, that's way better. So that, lots of you have grown carnivorous plants for a long time. Know that these guys will rain down seeds and you'll find Cape Sundews in all your other little pots. We don't try to stop them. But you can see just really one and a half flower stalks and I've got a ton of tiny black seeds. They're kind of surprisingly small, probably. Maybe you're expecting something bigger, but in this piece of paper, I mean, there's probably easily a thousand seeds. So this will be plenty for what we want to do. Um, we're going to walk on over to my uh, garden cart over there, the magical garden cart, and I'll show you what I do with these next. So I've talked about timing before, but the spring is probably the best time to sow Cape Sundew seeds. And here we are in spring. It's just about, it's uh, mid-March here. Uh, but they don't need a dormancy, and so if you have some grow lights, this is something that you could do all year round. I've got a uh, pot already filled with our mix, which is four parts peat to one part perlite. I've left a little bit of space between the top of the pot and the soil line so that the seeds won't be easily washed off the side. And then I'm just going to do my old tapping trick. Sometimes I'll make this a little bit wider. If I make the area I'm tapping them off a little bit wider, it's easier to spread them. You can see that way they're kind of distributing a little bit more. I'm just going to tap, and you can see all the little seeds falling over the edge, and I can use this to control how many I want to add. I'm just going to probably put most of them in here. Honestly, this is way, I mean, that's already enough. I'll probably stop. And you can see I still have all that, all of those seeds left over. Um, you could over sow them and put all of them in there. That just means you'll probably have way more than you need and you'll have to um, transplant them sooner. So it's good to just sow, you know, a reasonable amount so that when they do start growing, they don't all crowd each other out. But carnivorous plants can live pretty well tight like that. And so you could put a thousand in there if you wanted to. Um, if you really, really want to make a million Cape Sundews. Um, but a pot like this is actually plenty. And then, as we talked about in the other videos, you want to put this in a bright spot, either grow lights or bright indirect light, um, sitting in water, probably covered either in a bag or with a horticultural dome, like that one right over there. And they can take a little while to sprout. So now the patient part begins. Um, I wouldn't expect to see anything probably for at least three weeks, um, and that'll probably be soon. Don't be, 
discouraged if nothing comes up for six weeks or something like that. It can take a little while and then they are very tiny when they sprout so you're gonna have to look really really close if you want to see those little guys. They're really really teensy weensy and it'll probably take about a year to grow a nice Cape Sundew from seed which is why we recommend these. This is a great project you can do with your kids. I had success with this when I was a little boy, just doing it all on my own. Every day I would go out there and check with a magnifying glass to see who germinated. And it's really, really super fun to grow your own plants from seeds. And so I really encourage you to do so. We sell um, Cape Sundew seeds usually on our webpage and you can always buy one here. And one Cape Sundew becomes many thousands very quickly as you've seen. I hope you guys have fun giving this a try.